Hello, and welcome to Old Trafford on Tap. I'm Jack, here with the uh, the beautiful William O'Donovan. William, how are you? Good, Jack. You? I'm good, sir. How's all in uh, London? Uh, London is uh, lovely. It's quite beautiful at night time because it's empty enough, so it's uh, pretty to walk around in Chicago. Yeah, it's all right. The lockdown here is pretty, pretty stringent now in Illinois, so... Kind of the same as Ireland and England, I'm presuming. What's your um, surroundings like over there? Are you in the suburbs a lot? Yeah, yeah, I'm in the suburbs, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's actually a rich enough area uh, in my element. The Yeah, so today we're going to be getting to a podcast we're both pretty excited about. Um, our dream United 11s, our best 11. And we'll be focusing on from our time which is good too. Uh, it's going to be full of debate, I think. So we're going to have to come up with a... a it will actually be interesting to see if it is full of debate. Cause I think it will be. I have a few. I wrote, I wrote down some names in my shortlist that uh, I think you're going to scoff at. So we're going to be democratic. I think if it comes to it, look, we'll discuss this specific later, but we'll be flipping coins, I think, at some stages. There's um, a bit of a skip Bayless in you, I think. You think so? Actually... For this, there might be by the way you're going on about it, but as a person, no. All right, I'll take that. Um, do you like Skip? Do I like Skip? Yeah, I think he's a. I think he's he's a good showman. Like I actually, to be honest, I like him more with the amount Stephen A annoys me. Oh, but, uh, that yeah, I think the thing about more. Skip is when he's saying crazy shit, he actually believes it. Yeah, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but I get what you're saying. Um, yeah, but it's also it's a likable thing. It is, yeah, but he's also like a bit delusional. Uh, um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that way. That would help any man get through the day. Yeah. Uh, quick recap, so on United News, of course, there's not much living in coronavirus world. Um, I saw one article that grabbed my attention was uh, kind of following on from one of our debates last week. It was that uh, Petit, you know, the French midfielder, played for mm. Arsenal, came out and said, I think Lovely something hair. like yeah, great hair. A man. Um, a man. Yeah, I agree with that. That's a great word for it. Uh, he came out and said that Bruno, and he's a Frenchman, like, but he came out and said that Bruno, oh, I can't remember the exact quote, but he's being everything Paul Pogla should have been, um, kind of attitude-wise or whatever. Your thoughts on that? I'm going to look up for the exact quote here, but kind of we were talking about it last week, so I was interested to see what you thought about that. Uh, attitude-wise, yeah, absolutely. I don't know if should have is the right word but want we wanted him to be like yeah i gotta get the right there, quote, know. quote like because like obviously petit you know he could be on this podcast one day so i don't want to miss Brad, you're, you're good at french but you're not meant to pronounce the the t it's silent uh I, well, I was wondering was it the same with names but it definitely is yeah petit yeah you're right i'm an, an expert at french thanks for pointing that out to the world um beautiful Nuance to my uh, French dialect. Where is the quote? Emmanuel Petit saying Bruno doing what Pogba should. Yeah, that was the quote, actually. That was pretty spot on. Shocker. Fernandez has made a huge impact. He's changed the mentality. He has, like, it's all pretty... Paul Pogba was meant to be doing that for United. It's what he should have done in terms of leadership on the pitch. Ah, but he goes on to say, I'm looking forward to seeing him together on the pitch, which I suppose is a good point, too, if we can get him to mesh together. Um, be Would awesome. you say, uh, do you consider Paul Pogba as a leader in that locker room still? I, I would Yankees, say, right? I'd say so. I'd say yes, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. But, is yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, I also think Lingard has lead, like, is probably kind of a leader in that dressing room. Uh, uh Lingard boy. and all that. I think actually that you said that. I think that. I think Lingard is the guy all the foreign guys speak about in their own language, saying, is this guy fucking serious? Is this guy for real? Whatever that is in Spanish. Me no can I know. I don't know what you want a leader to be known, though. Like, it's in, it depends on the dressing room. Like, obviously, you're not going to get a Roy Keane again. I think Harry Maguire is probably a good balance. Um, but, like, I'm a more... I'm a conservative guy. Like, that's how I lead when I'm leading dressing rooms. Like, I'd be more, by example, you know, rather than dancing around the dressing room. But you want happiness as well, so... Look, to be honest, if Paul gets back playing, that's the first thing he has to do. Um, and I don't know when that's going to be, so 
it's hard to talk about. Another interesting thing, while we're still on Paul, this is going on because like obviously Juventus are like the crowd that are mainly tagged him these days and everything that's going on there. Uh, in Italy, um, it's probably going to happen. Well, hopefully not, but could happen in England to an extent as well. But anyway, just affecting transfers in general and the money clubs have and stuff like that. What do you think uh, Paul Pogba goes for? Like, if he goes this summer, what do you think we should accept? Uh, or what do you think it'll he'll go for? Straight away, the figure that comes to my head is 110 million. I think we'll just, I think we'll just get over what we paid from. Um. And I don't know if that's ridiculous or what, but that's figure. No, no, I don't think that's ridiculous. Yeah, I wouldn't accept under eighty, um, and I think we will get a hundred or hundred and ten. Yeah, because I saw something like there's an article last week saying fifty-five. That I don't know if it's was disheartening. That. Yeah, like we were going to buy your man Longstaff for fucking forty or something a year ago. Um. Yeah, but it's going to be interesting. And so you think, like, another few names coming in. Sancho, the figure I see is, like, 100, 110 million. To buy him? Um, yeah. Yeah. 100. Kane, then. I don't know if we mentioned that last week. That would probably be... Oh, you said 200, did you? I read that online. Yeah. Mm. yeah but, yeah, so basically, I don't know what the... Money is going to be interesting to see. If and the economy as well. Like, uh, wait, no, if him. we sell... Pereira, Lingard, Phil Jones, and we'll throw in Chris Smalling. You know, I'm very, I like Chris Smalling a lot, but he is. I do as well, actually. So, so Pereira? Pereira, Lingard, Jones, Smalling, and answer the question without Henderson and with Henderson, what do we get money wise if we sold all of them? Can I go through one by one and add it up, or do you want an overall figure? You can do whatever you want, man. Okay, Phil Jones, I saw 15 total, um, which would be very good. Uh, now, that could be a steal for whoever gets in. He's not terrible. He's not. Like, it's, it's you know, I agree. I agree. Um, and I really wanted him to be good. Like, we all remember what Ferguson said when he signed him. Uh, just didn't work out. It's sad, really. What did Ferguson say, Jack? That he was going to be, he could have had the potential to be one of United's greats. Like, mm. um, so yeah, that's sad. Uh, Lingard, I don't know what you're going to get for him. Who's going to buy him? Like, that's the problem Actually, there. You know, you said the word "sad." It's a buzzword. Did you hear what Phil Jones said when they asked him? That you heard that? Are you talking about the testimonial? Yeah, yeah. Now that's that. I would go to Phil Jones' testimonial. That's because you're cheap and you get tickets. Um, it was sad. It was sad. I'd go as well if I was in England. I wouldn't go from Chicago. Uh, Pereira. I think Pereira is more sellable than Lingard. I think you could get, although he's headless. I think he's young and he's got she, she, he's got technique and stuff like so. Again, I think you get 10, 15. I don't think you're getting over 20 million for Lingard. Like, uh, so you're looking at 30, 40 million. Then the last two you said, Smalling. Apparently Roma really like him and he's played well. Um... I've seen highlight videos and stuff. I haven't watched any Italian games. But, uh, so you might get 25, 30 ish for him. Maybe, like, I'm just picking figures out my ass. And then Henderson. Depends, I suppose, where Sheffield end up. If they end up in the Champions League, you could be looking at 50 million goalkeeper there, I think. Uh, 40, 50 million. So you're probably looking at the bones. If you sold all of them, bones of 100 million. Upwards to 120, depending anywhere between 80 and 120 million, maybe. Yeah, so hopefully, like, I was just thinking that we'd be able to buy Sancho with selling those players. So we, and some of those yeah. players are definitely going to go. So a lot of that fee uh, could go towards Sancho. But again, Jack, why do we care? You know, it's not our money. It's a close money, man. It's a what? I don't like spending big money. It's the club's money. Um, yeah, so... Moving on, I don't think there's any more news, really. Oh, the other one other thing. I don't know if you've seen it at all. This is, what's his name? Billingham? Biddingham? You heard about this? The Birmingham fella? Oh, yes. That we're in for. Have you seen him at all? 
I've seen a picture of him. I, see, I haven't seen him play. <laughs> I've seen a picture of him too. Uh, but we're big in for him, apparently. Um, He's only 16, lad. I know, yeah. Yeah, but like, there's a lot of clubs in for him. I don't know what to make of it. Uh, did you have anything He's to more defensive, that, isn't he? No, I just thought you might, so I said I'd bring him up. I'm just thinking of transfers. Like, I see him, Sancho, Grealish, and Madison are the names I keep seeing. I don't see Kane as much, to be honest. Uh, he met Ferguson when he went to the training ground. Did he? He did, yeah. Uh, Interesting. Pulling out all the stops. Uh, it's a door Ferguson, like, wherever he goes, now his little wife is always next to him. Partnership, lad. That's like, what we'd what have one when they go to Carrington, like, they drive in, you see the picture as he drives in, he's a sexy car, I think it's a BMW, and she's just there, like, fucking little red riding hood in the front seat. Like, what does she do at Carrington? Uh, she accompanies him, boy. But, like, she's mappy, has I don't think she accompanies him doing everything. Like, I'm just curious, like, what she would do when he's like, oh, I love going off, going to chat with Ole. Like, what does she do then? Like, so I'm sure there's home. people around the training ground that know her, having an old cup of tea with her or something. I don't know. I'd have to ask her. We'd love to have her on if she's interested. That would be a great interview, lad. That would be a fucking terrible interview. That would be a brilliant interview. The in- insight we'd get there. Um, Ready to move into the, to no, the, to lad, the beast of this thing? Another piece of news that... Uh, okay, go on. Just basically how this Oigalo fella has life figured out. So he's getting a new... That is true, actually. That's 400 a grand a year, year, 400 grand a week from yeah. the Chinese club if he goes back there, apparently, and signs a new contract, yeah? Yeah, I've seen that. Um, and I'd say this fella could support Leicester, like, because in this is where <laughs> this guy has the smarts, but whatever about football ability, he has the smarts, yeah? Oh, yeah. In BIS with you, but... Oh, yeah. That's a... That's a... That's hard to turn on with. Um, we'll see, you know. But again, this was probably all part of his... This guy's playing the long game, yeah? I hope he stays, man. I hope he stays. But like 400 grand a week. Did they show the Premier League in Nigeria 20 years ago? 400 grand, 400 grand a week. You should like a Gallo more. I thought you'd like I him. I know, more. I really you like him, lad. I'm just... I yeah, but even like, you say you really like him. Like, I thought you'd love him. He's a fucking great marketing team, mind him, anyway. Um, with that piece of news, I think we both said yes last week. So, Agalo, call it right now. Is he playing with United next season? After that news, boy, I actually am less confident, but I think he will. You still say yes. I still say yes as well. I think if he was playing football and scoring goals. There's also a possibility that his his own camp has leaked this story. So, when he does sign with us, he can also say, look, I, I don't care about money. I turn down 400k a week. I want to stay at Man United. Brilliant marketing team, man. We need to start working with his marketing team. All Probably right. His daughter or something. Shout out to uh, the Gallo's marketing team. If you want to help this podcast take off, we'd love to have you uh, expand into foreign foreign nations, maybe. Um, Up Nigeria. On a serious note, it is that that's a hard sum of money, no matter how much you love anything, to turn down like 400k a week. Yeah. What would that's... you be doing on 400k a week? Would you still work? Yeah, it'd still work. Uh, 400k a week, my days. How long will it take me? I'll take me 10 years to earn that, like, not necessarily at all. Sure, look, um, shout out anyway for the what site are we using? Firstly, shout out to Jack Lyons, listener, for sending on this site, billlineup.com. Uh, we're going to be using that to show our team on screen and build it together. It's actually beautifully simplistic. I can't wait to get into it. Um, Bill Lineup aren't sponsoring this episode, but you know maybe in the future they will be. Uh, I'll share it on screen there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through our Dream 11, build up from the goalkeeper. And I think if we have, I think what we're going to do as well is make note of like a runner-up team. Um, so if a player, if there's a clear like candidate for a second for a certain position, we're gonna. I'm gonna take note of that on screen, and then we'll see the A's versus the B's at the end, uh, which will be interesting to see. Um, I was a star B player growing up. But... You were a star B player, yeah. The uh, so we'll probably the then as well for bringing this uh, content to all our fans. True. Uh, Shout out to Streamyard. Yeah. We struck an arrangement with them just to give them some uh, 
publicity that we let them keep the logo there on the screen. So yeah. <laughs> the, the stream yard team there, they're working hard. Yeah, very good. Bring it up here. Perfect. That's on screen there. So I think that's a four four one one. Can you zoom I in there? It's a bit straining my eyes. I can't zoom in, lad. We had this last week. Oh, okay. It'll be bigger on a YouTube screen. I'll make it full screen and take off take oh, us yeah, off no, screen. I'm able to zoom myself. Okay, good man. Your eyesight isn't the best. Um I wonder if I zoom in there. Ah uh, lad, you're fucking it up now for me. Am I? Yeah. I like it for me though. It's perfect. All right. So that's a four four one one. I think we agreed off air. We'll do a four four two. Uh yeah, okay. Um if I can find the formation. Where the hell is the formation? I'll take that off screen a second. Geez, after sponsoring this now, they'll need to open it. It's play it has to be in players, but is it? Icon subs. Are you after breaking it? I'll tell you, you know, I'm meant fit for his bid. Oh, there we go. That vanished a second. Okay, four, four, two. How did you do it? I'm actually looking at myself now. I don't know. It just went off screen. It came back there when I refreshed it. Pick secondary scholar. We said red. This reminds me of the um, the AIG kit. I think 2008 we won the Champions League, so I like that. A great year. I'm sure some players will make it in from that year. Players. All right, starting here. Four, four, two. Going to build from the back. And we've also come to the agreement as well that we'll come to the uh, age old tradition that if we have a 50 50 agreement, disagreement, which I'm sure we will, that we're going to flip a coin uh, to see who gets to put their players in. Um, I'm looking forward to this, lad. It's going to make for good content. All right. Content is king. Content is king. So starting off, goalkeeper. I think there is, from our time, I think there's two main contenders. Uh, I'll take the lead on goalkeeper, and then you can take the lead on left back. We'll go we'll go alternating. Uh, two main contenders from my time. Obviously, he was a great Peter Schmeichel, but for me, he's not in contention because he was before I started uh, Love United, really. It'd be unfair for me to put him in. Um, and this is what makes, I think, this team more interesting for us. It's going to be a newer team, more modern. So two main contenders I have. This is actually going to be an interesting one to see where you go. Uh, Edwin van der Sar. Uh, and David De Gea, um, two kind of different legends, I suppose. Edwin has a more nostalgic feel to him. Um, I think if you put him up keeper against keeper and had him attributes on FIFA, I don't know I don't know if you were on FIFA, if Edwin van der Sar has ever had a higher rating than David De Gea. I'd say he probably hasn't. Uh, reflexes, all that. Um, Attribute-wise, David De Gea is probably a better keeper, and David De Gea has been has been the world's best keeper, I think, for a two or three years stretch there. I don't know if Edwin van der Sar was ever clearly the world's best pe keeper. He was there with Peter Cech kind of when he was in his prime at the same time. So it's really interesting that way. But Who do you think was the world's best keeper when United won the Champions League and all that? I'd say Buffon then still probably. I always loved Buffon though, so I was biased towards him. Um, I'd have to look back and get a list of keepers, but... Czech was still very good then, wasn't he? Or was he past his prime? Um, I would say Czech I think Czech was still there. Then, no. Yeah. Um, Cassius, of course. Uh, that how good yeah, was Cassius? Was he world class? I think so. I don't know. It's a good question when you ask it like that. He's like he was regarded world. He's a wormy fuck. <laughs> Didn't he? What did he do recently that he got in trouble for? Oh, it's not ringing any bells, lad, for me. I'm sorry. He did something that poor, though, didn't he? All right, you can keep talking there. I'm going to look into this this shady character's history. Um, I am. So, yeah, all that being said, talking up to here, and David, thank you for the service you in the club. But for me, my goalkeeper, uh, I will be voting for Edwin van der Sar and as my dream, my all-time favourite United keeper. Uh, and best, I'm going to say best as well. I just think around the team, there was something really calm about that guy. I know everyone says it, but I loved him. Um, and he was part of one of the Premier Leagues. 
well, one of United's and one of the Premier League's greatest defences. Uh, so, Edwin van der Sar gets the nodding goal for me. William O'Donovan, what say you? Uh, Edwin van der Sar for me as well. Uh, I recently had to remind myself, I actually had to look this up. Uh, you would just think for me that De Gea has won more than one league with us, but he's only won one Premiership. I saw that actually recently as well. No, yeah, yeah, that's all he's won. Um, so I actually, I don't even think it's that close for me to be honest. And I really like David De Gea, but I don't even think that's that close. You agree with me? The kind of attribute thing I was saying though, that like if you wait up keeper against keeper, it's probably a lot closer. Do you think like there's a nostalgic element of us picking Edwin? Uh, there is nostalgia, yeah, but there's also championships. Yeah, um, but I suppose but if, if Edwin, you're taking like if, stripping championships away and all that, and you're saying just weighed up attributes, then yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, but look, it's our favorite as well as our all time. Like it's so it's it's going to be an interesting team. But I'm glad that everyone gets not in goal. Uh, type that in. Oh, that feels good actually. Copy and pasting that in. I like that. No, get rid Edwin of the first name because they type it on the pitch as well. Get rid of the what? The first name. See, it's coming up. Edwin van der Sar under his name. Yeah, I was going to put the full name. You just want the second name. Yeah, that makes more sense. You're right. Van der Sar, I like that. And Captain uh, um, e, man, that was driving you insane. But the van in Dutch, that says small, doesn't it? Van der Sar, even at the start. Look that up there as well. Mr. Drive Me Insane. Aesthetic in that it just looks, it's drive, it is driving me insane. I don't care. Look up what it does. I'm going to go light green as well. It'll be easier to see their names. Um, okay, that's fine. Nice one. You can just say I'm correct or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, do you want to go right back or left back first? You're taking the lead. Uh, I suppose, oh, do we do I want to store? I absolutely know we're going to disagree on right back. Right back's so gonna be fascinating. Do I want to yeah. go there? No, we'll keep it. Do you want to do right back last? Will right back be no, no, we'll build up. I get what you're saying, but we'll build up. We'll build up. Lad, we'll, we're going to disagree elsewhere as well. I know we are. I wrote down some names. I hope you're not. I hope you're not doing a skip there approach. No, I'm purpose, yeah? I hope you're being... I'm not. I'm not. Respect. I'm not. I'm talking... This is players... I to balance my affinity for a player as well as the ability. So, a brief and example. That's common, please, yeah? Uh, I will. I will. I will. You will want to. Um, so, are we doing left back? Is that what we're doing? Left back, sir. I think, look, we'll get on with it. You're a man who doesn't like to waste time. I have ever in there... If we're doing our error only, I think it's pretty easy. Dennis Irwin, we all loved him. He's a Bears man. Uh, I have personal connections with the Bears. Um, but it's Evra, and I don't think we should waste too much time on it. Uh, I 100% agree, Patrice. And he's a guy as well who loved United, still does love United. And he's, as well as being, again, he was the world's best left back at a time, or he was right up there. Um, world class by definition. and. On top of that, he loves United. He needs, uh, to, he needs to pull Paul Pogba's coat a bit and say, hey, son, straighten up, yeah? Button your top. Sh Whoa. Mr. Top button, yeah? Yeah. He's Mr. I love Mondays. I love ever. I love everything about him. And he also had a bit of dog about him, um, which Blah, I loved. Blah. He, like, oh, you love having that in your team, kind of the Andrew Herrera effect, like just player that if he's on the other team, you'd hate him. Uh, but when he's on your team, you love him. So Patrice Evra, honourable mention for me. Oh, I have to make the other team as well. That's going to be fun. Honourable mention for me, uh, a player I loved at left back, a bit of a cult hero, uh, Gabriel Heinze. Are you a fan of the man? Uh, no, I, lad, I actually can't say I am. He had one really good season where we all thought he was going to be, he was going to be a cult hero and a legend. But I think uh, he kind of rapidly disappeared uh, in my point of view. And Roy Keane knocked them out as well, so he was pussy. So who would you say... What is he playing in the background there? Are his earphones after coming out? That is absolutely... I apologise to the audience. Terribly unprofessional. I apologise on his behalf. Apologies, lads. Uh, rule number one of show business, yeah? Turn off your phone on set. Um, who would you say so? I'm um, because I'm monitoring the second team as well. If you'd put in a, a left back, our time, who would you put in? 
uh, left back our time. Second Sylvester. ever. It's very difficult to. Silvestre. Yeah. That's an excellent shout, actually. That is an excellent shout. Okay, and he so was the, an excellent centre back as well before Vidic. It was him and Ferdinand. And he, um, and he looks like an alien. Silvestre. Oh, that's a great pick. If he headbutted you, Jack, what happens to you? Oh, this is the first team. Sylvester, you're not getting in, my friend. I'm sorry. Evra, what a player. That's good. Dad, this team's going to be so sexy by the end of it. If Sylvester headbutted me, I'm actually I'm a good headbutter myself. Uh, if he headbutted me, I think he'd come off the worst. I'm a pretty hard head. Dad, I'd say he'd drive your head into your neck, but. <laughs> Moving to. This will be interesting, actually. On a team sheet. Okay, we're moving to the centre backs. Um, left centre back first, I suppose I'll do. Uh, I think there's two really obvious contenders for centre back. I don't think it's close either. Um, I'm going to name my hero first. Came in the same January as the fella playing next to him. Uh, I think 9 million. 9 million and 13 million for one of them. I can't remember which was 9 and which was 13. Between himself and Evra, but uh, Nemanja Vidic, an absolute hero. Uh, look, I think we both know who the centre backs are going to be, um, and I'll let you talk through the other one, uh, and then honourable mention. Another honourable mention, like players like Sylvester, Wes Brown as well. I just, I want to say that fella, he was brilliant. For, he actually was brilliant for a year. He played a whole, I don't know what which year he played a load of games. One of them was injured, um, but then he always used, yeah, he always used to come in as well. Uh, just for like those Champions League group games and stuff, and I loved Wes Brown. Um, but yeah, my left centre back, Nemanja Vidic, hardest man in the world. I also think we can't name this team without like Nemanja was the best centre back in the world for every game except when he played Fernando Torres. Uh, so as long as our all time 11 isn't playing a team that has Fernando Torres in it, lad, I think that's uh, absolutely overrated, lad. Torres had it, yeah, Torres made shit of him. I don't like the way people bring it up, like that's so fucking stupid. It was just amazing how Torres always got the better of him. Torres even when he was bad and went at Liverpool. But it was yeah, but like Vidic would fall over and stuff. Like there were some great like gif mo gif moments and stuff like that. And Torres when he was bad, it was as if it was gypsy work. Like it was just a couple of bad games. Like people I disagree. I think it was brilliant. I think it was more than a couple. It was literally every time he played, and even when he was with Chelsea, oh, yeah, then after Torres I, 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 and declined every time he played, Torres that. And even when Torres declined at Chelsea, he came back and he came on. And I remember he did Vidic again. Um, I, I don't think it was every time. It was probably three or four games. Then I was going to bring up Grant Soon's comment, but we won't. Nemanja Vidic in for me, left centre back. And like I said, as long as we're not going up against a Liverpool 11 with Torres, then it would be all right. Like this man in. Put Torres in that 11, and I still think we'd be very much all right. I think we would, as long as we just took Vidic out and put in Brown. Um, Vidic in left centre-back. William, you want to take right centre-back? Uh, Rio Ferdinand, uh, again, I think that is not even close. And actually, uh, he put out a tweet today that himself and his new wife are doing a live stream exercise workout at half nine. British and Irish time tomorrow morning. So I'm actually going to attend it. So if anyone else wants to join, I'll see you there. That's actually very interesting. It'll probably be half three or whatever my time, so I'll be asleep, but uh, enjoy it, lad. Any other mentions at centre-back you want to talk about? Harry Maguire, hopefully in three or four years' time, we'll be talking about him. Yeah, I am going to say someone, actually, because I... No, he's probably not going to get brought up for right back, even though he did play there sometimes too. John O'Shea, when he had to play centre back, was solid as well. Solid as well. Anyone else we're forgetting, kind of from that time? Do we want like just before? Who did we have before Vidic? Who was our starting centre back? Uh, they were playing Sylvester and Rio. Sylvester and Rio. Interesting, that. So Brown O'Shea. Who else do we say? Maguire. Maguire hasn't been with us long enough yet, I suppose. Boy, a player I love, but the man's made of glass. He'll never get in there. But jeez, I love Eric. That I'd throw Smalling in there too, lad. You throw Smalling in there. So if yeah. you on our on our on our second team, who are you thinking? 
Uh, what is our second team right now? De Gea. De Gea. Silvestre. Um, and who did we say for Vidic? I said, I just mentioned Wes Brown. I'd play him on the right, though, because he played right back as well. But you've John O'Shea. Mm, I wouldn't put John O'Shea in centre-back for this. I'd probably put Brown and maybe... We can't put uh we can't put Brown in there yet, unfortunately. Why so why not? We just can't yet. Um I would say John O'Shea for me and um Oh last. Hard to think of it. I think Heinz might have to come back in. I'm not counting <laughs> Lauren Blanc. Yeah, he was just at the tail end, wasn't he? Um, you could nearly, you nearly could, lad. Nah, I'd be tight. I'd be tight. Well, if you are counting him, then he absolutely, he is one hundred percent in there. If we are counting. All right, look, I'll make that offline and I'll move on. Okay, um, I'll put Ferdinand in. I suppose this is the first thing to do. Moving on to right back. This actually is beautifully difficult, and I have a few names here to bring up. Um. I'd say we'll be flipping a coin on this one. So, okay. Obviously, the first name to mention, I think you have to mention, is uh, Mr. Gary Neville. Gary was in that class of 92 or whatever, came up season 99. But we did get, we got the tail end of Gary Neville. And we got the tail end of some greats, but Gary probably tailed off a little bit quicker um, than... The other players that we'll go on to mention in midfield, um, and we might have seen him at his prime prime, so that probably affects our opinion. But he still was a solid right back for a lot of that successful period that we had. Uh, but he didn't like he he came in and out with uh, Mr. Wes Brown, um, and there's other players just pulling at me that I want to mention. Like it's a balance between players that we loved and success with the club and all that and their actual ability. Um, I think I'm remember, remembering him too fondly, but I thought Raphael had a great period there. Uh, and again, he's not going to, I'm actually not going to put him forward. So I'm going to mention these players and then probably submit my, and I'll submit my final submission then for you to debate. Antonio Valencia, I thought had a brilliant period at right back, had a great season, um, had a great two seasons and one brilliant season at right back. And he was solid for a, a good four-year stretch there obviously a converted winger and he tailed off drastically in his last season there but i actually think i actually think all around he might have been the be when he was at his best right back i think he might have been the best right back i've seen at united um which is a very interesting comment to make and then another player i want to mention because he played there as a utility player a couple of times and because i loved him uh sir alex ferguson didn't but I loved him, and I just don't think I'm going to be able to get him in midfield, is Owen Hargreaves, a uh, deadly set piece taker as well. Um, but he was brilliant that 08 year. Uh, again, he did his injury problems, but he is a cult favourite of mine. Um, so my right-back submission is probably... Oh, and of course, actually, honourable mention, Aaron wan I think, in four or five years' time, uh, could sweep this easily. If he continues on the trajectory he's on uh, with his tackling ability, it's insane. Uh, but again, Maguire, Basaka, these guys who have only been here a year, I don't think we can put them in just yet. My submission for our right back is going to be Antonio Valencia. Uh, William, please take the floor. Um, so I'll try and go in the same order. Um, look, obviously, Gary, you know, Jack. Well, you know, we've reached a point in our lives where he's now a peer of us. You know, he's working in the, the sports media industry. Um, and I will respect that. Uh, he's brilliant at it, Jack. He's one of the best pundits out there, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I think um, he did. I would definitely put Gary Neville in there, except we're doing this rule where it's of our era. And I think when it came to our era, he was on the decline. I think if that rule wasn't there, He'd definitely be in there. Just absolutely. Agreed. Uh, we're doing this rule, which I appreciate. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, Raphael, there was no doubt about it. He did have a great stretch. And he was actually, he would probably, 
for this exercise be my um my number two. Uh, I thought he was really good. I really liked him. Um, Antonio Valencia, we loved him. Uh, when he was playing at right back, he was not always defensively solid. He was great going forward, but just not. He was there was goals that I can remember him being accountable for. Um, so I wouldn't have him as a right back. He'd be closer to being in my midfield than his defensive stretch. Uh, but he was still great going forward. Um, I want to name drop here as well, John O'Shea. This is a position that he did play in. And again, he was just really solid. I hope we can fit him in the B team somewhere. Um, I think once we bring up Owen Hargreaves' name, to be honest, I think uh, <laughs> we just want to show people that we have a nice vocab. Um, and then um, my choice, who we're going to have to flip the coin for, is Wes Brown at uh, right back. Um, you mentioned Jackie filled in one year when either Vidic or Rio was out. That actually wasn't the year I'm thinking of. I think that was the season before. Uh, the year I'm thinking of is uh, when he made 31 appearances in the league, the year we won the Champions League, at, um, the most of those appearances coming at right back, and we only let in 21 goals. Just amazingly solid player, and he also crossed the ball for um, Ronaldo in that final in the Champions League. And I'm also... Um, included in my thinking is my midfield just the player i have going in our right midfield um i'm not going to be as gaffer of that team i'm not going to be asking them to track back so just from a defensive point of view and just amazingly solid player i'm putting in wes brown at right back i um the only thing was Brown. I was just about to concede, and I know we're not trying, we're not debating here, but like you, you convinced me. You talked about it, I, and you brought up just when he he played really well and his best years when we were at our best, and that that does. And really that, that season you brought up was uh that was a different season. I think that was the year before because he also had a lot of appearances in that season. Um, um right back or seven or eight, he played right back. I just, the only thing is, and I know you brought up the point about him crossing uh, for that goal. And I also know that you want a solid right back in your team here. Um, I just don't know if he's enough going forward to be in my dream United 11 for our time. Is that a bad thing? That he doesn't have enough going forward? Yeah. It's a, draw, it's a slight drawback, yeah, for me. But like anybody else you're putting in, well, Valencia anyway, if you put him in there... Again, at right back, and whoever's going ahead of him. I think he had a year, lad, where he was he was he was the best right back in the world. He wasn't. Again, defensively, like he wasn't. Like he tailed off very badly defensively at the end. But I he had a year where defensively, I think he was as good as he was going for it. I thought he had off at the end, but defensively, he was never amazing. I think he was for a year, year and a half. He was a really good player, lad. He was never the best right back in the world. Right back in the world. No. Raphael then is kind of like a halfway house between the two. Oh, Raphael is my number two going in there, to be honest. Mm. And my number three would be John O'Shea. Again, assuming this, this not putting Gary Neville in or Pierre. Jeez, yeah, I forgot completely about Gary Neville. But we're, mm. we basically are forgetting about Gary Neville for the purpose of this exercise. Yeah, but it's close with Neville. Like if he if he had a year or two more years, as in if he started like his career probably a year or two later, he just probably he would be in there. Then def, it's weird with Gary. But you're right. That, that, like, look, he was for that yard where the dead horses go. The knackers yard. Um. The fucking glue factory and it's ironic because glue can keep them together at that stage Dax says you I think we'll I think we'll go for for Wes I'm going to put Wes Brown in 
I hope we do get to do a coin flip, though. Um, we will actually. Oh, we will, yeah. I hope so, too. I'm going to put Wes Brown in. Right back. Geez, that's, a, that's a winner for the hard worker, that is. Love it, Wes. And I associate with the working man. I love that. You know, you're Jack, you're, you know, you're a businessman, you're a man who likes his riches. You know, there's, there's the fellas who have to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and I associate with them. Go working on the, um, the road, basically. What do you think on my point, uh, Re Aaron Wambasaka? You think he's a chance to, to be a great? I really, I really think he does. Absolutely. Yeah, he looks good. I think if we, if we do this, if we're running this podcast in five years' time, there could be a, a right. He could be engraved in there. Um. All right. I presume we'll flip over so and go left to right on the midfield as well. I think you're up, William, to take the lead on this left midfielder. Um. Now this is where the rule for me. This fuck this. Sorry, my curse in that. I hope. Nah, talk it through. Yeah, talk it through. I'll let you take uh, the floor. Go on. Name all your players. Just name the left midfielder. Like name the players you're considering and the debate. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, but is in this thing in my head, like as in this rule, because now to be fair, Giggs was not as cropped as Neville, which was one of the amazing things about him. Not at all. He lad, he was basically the Tom Brady of a. Uh, of Man United, um, he was not as cropped. Like a lot of, I think, a lot of the great seasons I saw him playing, he was playing in the central midfield almost because the legs were going. Um, so me putting him at left midfield is that is tapping into those years that were excluding from this exercise. Uh, do you have that conflict as well, yeah? Or is, are you just do you have a completely different look on the left midfielder? Um, I agree with your centre midfield comment. Um, it's interesting. We could end up tinkering with the formation. We'll see in changing players, but uh, see, that's the thing for if I don't put gigs in, I think I have to change the formation because I uh, there was. Jesus Christ, man. Do you know what? Actually, I know what I'm going to do when it's just came to me. I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do it again. I'm, I am, I'm going to do this. Uh, Nanny is going in left midfield. Oh. <laughs> Lad. There was many a time I tried to do that backflip in my back garden. Oh, is Nanny your actual submission? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on. Are you not naming players? But the obviously, there's one player who has to get in. Are you considering him as a winger or a striker? Uh, in this formation, a winger. Okay, I think so. Yeah, I'm interested here. I'm gonna have to. Oh, did he ever really play as a striker at United? He did in Champions League games, and Rooney in like a four-three-three, he would go as like a false nine or as a leading nine occasionally, and Rooney would play on the left wing. I know um, Rooney would play on the left wing, but I remember Tevez and Saha being the striker. No, no, he did. He did not as much at all as he has later in his career, but he did. He did. Um, this is interesting. I'm looking at my team now. I am up until two minutes ago. I did not know Nanny was getting in this team, so that's interesting. I have. Oh my god! Oh, that honourable mentions up front. Okay, I think I've got it now. I think I know what I'm doing. All right, I am going to put uh, in this four four two. I'm going to put Ryan Giggs on the left of midfield. Um, I respect everything you said, and they're all like the fact that I'm like debating and it's close is shows that I agree with what you're saying. Like a lot of when I saw him at his best later in later years was in centre midfield, but I still saw him play left midfield and I still saw him be players even when he was old. Um, and he can 
I think, paired with Ever in this team, providing the more physical attributes, bombing on down the left. Um, I think that he can dovetail with him nicely and still provide some of the incisions and true balls from the left midfield position, um, kind of playing as an inside left midfielder. Uh, but I still saw, like, Gig still had legs at the start, like I remember him, and taking on players down the left, so... Uh, Ryan Giggs for me, despite getting the second half is, of his career, which is less explosive, no doubt, can than the you, first half. Can you I'm give me a him. run through of the, the B team so far? Can I give you a what? A run through of the B team. Um, sure. Or have you not been doing it? No, I have. Okay. I was going to just flash it up at the end, though. Just give me a brief, just give me the name so far, and I won't ask again until the end. Okay. The names so far are De Gea, Silvestre, Blanc, Raphael's on the right back, and then centre back. I actually have a tie between Smalling and O'Shea. Um, Oof, it's fucking sexy. So that's the B team so far. Okay. So left midfield, my submission is Ryan Giggs. I have Nanny down the line on my shortlist as well, and I actually liked, I remember being on the bus going to school and uh, defending Nanny. This is secondary school, high school, whatever. Uh, and defending Nanny the year before, he had his very good year. Uh, and then I remember and being in a big debate, I was saying that he's very good or whatever. And then the next year when he was good, everyone on the bus actually respected me. So I, I have very fond memories of Nanny. Um, but I don't think he gets in my all-time United 11. So I'm happy to put gigs there on left midfield. Uh I would ideally, there's other left wingers I'd like to play there, but I think the drop off on players on the right means that that player gets in on the right for me and playing gigs on the left in my all time United 11. Do you want to put gigs in or do you want to flip for Nanny over gigs? Um, basically, to rephrase your question, as in, it is do I ignore the rule for left midfielder? No, that's not the question, to be fair. Uh, in my eyes, that is the question. Like, Because as a left midfielder, I don't... <sighs> no, I want, uh, I want the coin flip. All right. Actually, you know what? I won't because I know there's going to be another coin flip, so we can put gigs in. Thank God. All right, Ryan Giggs is getting in. Um, why? Why are you saying thank God there? Why do you need him to get in for some reason? No, I don't need him to get in. I don't need anything. It's grand. Ryan Giggs. You'll have to give him his eleven shirt as well. Stop from the numbers. Giggs playing left midfield. Very good. All right. Uh, first centre midfielder, I suppose I'm up. Um, who am I putting in here? Oh, yeah. Okay, first centre midfielder. Uh, this, I think we're going to have coin flips. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, who will I put in straight away that I want to get in? And then I'll debate for. Wait, wait. To, to speed it up, is Skulls getting in? Because then we can just debate the other position. Skulls is getting in, yeah. Okay, so just put him there. Yeah. And then yeah. It's a good point. We're putting skulls in. Uh, before moving on, like just that's a guy as well. We got the second half of his career, but he was just so talented that he was still unreal. He even got better. Maybe he just got he just changed his game. Uh, skulls, my probably my favorite ever United player. Um, and I missed the half of his career, so that just shows how unreal he was. Yeah, lad, and... an absolute class football player, but an absolute cringy Instagram user. I haven't been following him at all. You're doing yourself a favor. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, oi, what happened there? He, what was I going to say on skulls there? The quote I always love, I think it was Zidane. Um, someone asked him, you probably know as we've talked about, how it feels being the best midfielder in the world. And he just said, I don't know, ask Paul Scholes. Uh, and that always, because Zidane's my favorite ever footballer. For So for him to say that, I think just shows that. Zidane's your favorite ever footballer? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just shout out to Paul Scholes. I know we're moving on, and I just don't. I just want to stay on him because the fact he's probably the 
along with two center backs, they're probably like the easiest one to do. And that's just a testament to how classy he was and the left back ever. So Paul Scholes, thanks for all the years. Um and that was a miserable bastard but go on. <laughs> moving on to the other center midfielder. Uh so we've got some names here. Um I'm gonna shout out some of my uh favorite names and then you can do your favorite names and then we'll kinda we'll try and bring that tornado to a to a halt and come up with a final player to submit in there. But there could be fucking four coin flips here, it's a um players that I wanna m- mention, centre midfield going from bottom to the top, probably. Another player I'm putting in, I'm saying his name again, Owen Hargreaves. Uh I loved him. I thought in that away year. Um he was brilliant. Absolutely he was absolutely brilliant. It made a huge difference to our team. Uh, How many times did he actually play in that year? Uh, you can look it up and call me around. Um, I can remember I, him. I remember him for that year for playing in the Champions League final and scoring a free kick against Arsenal. I loved him. Um, I know. I think Ferguson said in his book he's the only player he sat across from just before he signed him and regretted it because uh, he saw something in his eyes or something to that effect. So completely not on the page, on the same page as the great man on this one. But I love Don Hargreaves and just wanted to mention him. Um, I know you've no time for him apparently, but just wanted to bring his name up. Uh, another player I loved in the recent years is Ander Herrera. Again, he's not getting near this, but a player I loved. Uh, I loved him. I think a lot of player United fans liked him because of the the attitude and the kind of dirtiness he had to him. But I loved him more than most. Um, then moving on to my actual kind of contenders. Giggs, if he wasn't playing on the left, would have been a contender in here to play in the middle of midfield. I saw him have some great games pulling strings in the middle of midfield. Um, then moving on to, oh, and another player I want to mention uh, who'd be in my kind of favourite team would be Anderson. Um, he'd be right up there, one of my favourite United players. I think on his day, when he was fit, he was brilliant. Uh, absolutely unbelievable, actually. I loved Anderson. Um, unfortunately, just too many good centre midfielders for him to get in this team. But uh, just a player, I remember chanting his song again on the bus in and out from school so many times. I loved him so much. Um, my two main contenders then are between Roy Keane and Michael Carrick. Um, so I think I said in the last podcast, like my first memory that Bayer Leverkusen game. Like Roy Keane, obviously, and being Irish and from Cork and everything as well. I and him being like people consider him as well one of the greatest midfielders Premier League's ever seen. Uh, I just didn't see that um, enough. I think I got so just the tail end, unfortunately. And my earliest memories of Roy Keane as well are the end United so I have the two thousand and two uh, incident in Saipan with Ireland for the World Cup where he walked out, and I was younger at the time, so I didn't understand it. Um, I just remember him not playing. That made me really sad. And then it was soon after that, he had the folly out over the MUTV interview um, and left United. So I just think I came in a year or two too late um, to appreciate how great he was. Uh, and for that reason, my submission for the midfielder next to Paul Scholes will be uh, Mr. Consistent Michael Carrick, one probably of the most underappreciated players uh, United have ever had. Um, loved him. Uh, always did value him as a player and as I've talked through it now he's actually my strong submission for the other sentiment fielder next to Paul Scholes uh, William uh, yeah I was only a two horse race it's Keane or Carrick um, I love Carrick lad. I really love Carrick uh, I think if you ask any player so far in this team and probably by the end of it throughout their whole career who was the best ever captain they played for, I think they'd all say Roy Keane, including Vida Ginevra. Maybe not for Andres there, because uh, they didn't get on. But um, best captain, leader, he drove his teammates. And if we bent the rule for gigs, we also have to bend it for Keane. So we need to do a coin flip there. Uh, yeah, just for me on the bending the rule thing, uh, I just saw a lot more gigs personally playing at a high level than Keane. But also to appreciate, you're a year earlier to the game than me and got another year with the man. No, uh, but not even that, lad. Left midfielder through our, with our era, who had the highest between Nanny and gigs. 
who had the best season you saw as a left midfielder season. Nani was instrumental in the two Premier Leagues we won after Ronaldo. I think that's might be remembering too fondly. Maybe not. Maybe that, not. that's not remembering fondly. Too fondly, two years. I think maybe. Look, he got players. You do and lift the field is in. So this time, what you want for? I let you pick. Have the honors as the older gentleman. Heads or tails? No, wait. Let's address this first. Remembering fondly, Nana, you got players, player of the year during that era. Remove. Hey, coins out. We've moved on from that position. Heads or tails? That's ignorant. Heads. Heads for Keane. Tails for Michael Carrick. Are you happy I'm doing it fairly? Uh, no, I want a coin flip now for left midfield as well. We've moved on from that. It's in. I'm it, sorry. It's, it's penciled in. Right, that's not how it works. It is penciled in. It's team. penciled in. It's not penciled in. You can You'll see your team at the end. No. Are you ready? A coin flip for left midfield. Are you ready? It depends. Are we doing it for left midfield and centre midfield? Because if we are, then I'm extremely ready. We've moved on from left midfield, William. You need to accept that. Um, lad, I don't appreciate that. I think that's unfair. Do the coin flip. You ready? This is it now. Heads. Keen gets in. Carrick will be in the second team. I'm happy enough to have him in. I'm probably underappreciating him. But for me, it was Carrick. But Roy Keane in our first team all time 11. Sounds right to say. Moving on to right midfield. Uh, William, you can take the lead on this one. Uh, Ronaldo. Uh, okay. Cristiano Ronaldo. I think that's fair. Um, I'd ideally play him on the left in a perfect world. I think he's better cut in off the left, probably more dangerous. But uh, I actually remember him very fondly doing step overs when he started his career on the right of midfield for United. Uh, others I had for right midfield as well. Beckham, but just didn't see him. Uh, he was too late, unfortunately for me. Again, another player I had for right midfield because I really wanted to get him in was Hargreaves. Uh, playing him on the right, and then, but geez, if you'd Hargreaves and Brown, you get no contributions whatsoever. And I had Nani on the right as well to get him into the team, but they're all second and third tier to Cristiano Ronaldo. So I'll pencil it in for the right of midfield. If we're doing a second right midfielder, who would you put in? Uh, Valencia. Valencia. Do I have him in the second team? No, I won't. Okay, I'll be happy with putting him in the second team, Valencia. Nani, first team. Cristiano Ronaldo. I'll give him a shirt number seven. And no, onto two strikers. Okay. Um, I have a lot of players for strikers. I'd say we'll probably end up. I think there's one player you'd want in here that I just didn't see enough of. Um, I'll go through my players first. I think all of them. I'll say that kind of working from bottom to top again. Chicharito, very fond memories of him. He's not getting in this team, uh, but uh, for me, but I really like Hernandez. Uh, when he's with and like a bit of a cult hero um, and I think he'd be very valuable to any team he ever played with because the attributes he brought stretching the defence in behind and things like that uh, up from him then I think a player that deserves a mention is Ibrahimovic he was brilliant for a year with us and I loved him um, just that attitude he brought uh, he's a big part of the team and up from him again a hero I'd have is Dimitar Berbatov, one of my favourite ever United players. Absolutely gutted the year he was left out of the Champions League final squad. And I thought it was very unfair. I think he was top to score in the league that year as well. Um, 
remember the hat trick against Liverpool. I have some great memories of Berbatov. That skill on the end line as well when he set up Ronaldo. Can't remember what team that was against, but in like a favorite team. If I was doing my all-time favorite team, I think players like him and Anderson would get in. Uh, but he just misses out uh, on the top tier strikers I have. So, oh, another player, honorable mention. Um, you probably liked him even more, but I loved as well Luis Saha. Uh, he'd probably be between Berbatov and Chicharito for me in terms of the moment I liked him and his ability. So, I my three favorite strikers and my three nominations for up front on this team. Um, actually, I have two. I have a third, and then I have my two strikers that I want to nominate. Uh, one more player I will have to mention because I think you're going to bring him up is Ruud van Nistelrooy. I just remember him for a year, pretty much. Um, two years, actually. I remember him for two years. Uh, and again, I really liked him. I don't think there's anything you can't not like about Ruud van Nistelrooy, but I just didn't see enough of him. Um, I remember him enough in my head. Uh, to put him in this team, so he deserves a mention. But my third place, just missing out, and it's controversial because of where he went afterwards, but Carlos Tevez. Uh, I adore Tevez and thought he was brilliant. I um, remember the year, the final game of the season, when he was playing with West Ham at Old Trafford. Uh, I don't know if we were linked to him then or not, but I wanted to sign him so badly then. Then... He was on winning teams. His attitude and everything was just brilliant always. Um, and I thought he was just an unreal footballer. And he probably even football-wise, because he was the main man at City afterwards, did even more. Um, you got to appreciate his more technical ability rather than just the selfless work he did for the team. So Carlos Tevez just missing out for me. Uh, my two strikers would be, and I think they partnership really well as well, is Wayne Rooney. Um, United great. And I think the longer that goes on away from Wayne Rooney, the more people are going to appreciate him. Um, Wayne Rooney and he would dovetail up front with Robin Van Persie for me as in my all-time United eleven. Um, Van Persie that year was just sensational. Absolutely sensational uh, when he league on his own. Um, and I know his time was very brief uh, at his best with United, but when I did this in my head, uh, going through it, it actually just, he separated himself so much as just a, an icon that I absolutely adored and thought was a different level to everyone else in the pitch when he played. So my two nominations for the strikers are Wayne Rooney and Robin Van Persie. Uh, William, over to you. Um, yeah, so Rooney's uh, getting in for me. Scroll up the thing there, will you? Uh, so put Waza in. Um, shout out to Wayne Rooney. Well, I used to just love watching him uh, play his ass off. But um, another player as well whose body just absolutely caved in on him. Uh, he couldn't work like he used to. Uh, but I absolutely loved him. Um, so... Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, I didn't even really consider Van Persie for this position uh, just because he was only good really one year. Um, Tevez, Berbatov. Um, I love Tevez too. That. Uh, any striker that can score goals and work his ass off is just... It's, um, it's just like watching a good film. But... Um, I am putting in uh, Luis Aja as the other striker. Uh, oh, yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a personal rude. affinity to him, obviously, but uh, just an amazing finisher. I can't remember who said it, but I think it was... I, for some reason, I think Sir Alex Ferguson always comes into my head, but I don't think he said it. I think it might have been Gary Neville who said he was the best finisher he saw during his time at United. I don't I know. I think Skoll said something about his movement. I think Skoll said something about his movement. He said uh, he was the easiest striker to pick out or something like that. But yeah, just crippled with injuries. And I was looking recently at their, all these fellas. I didn't check it for Van Persie. Um, but all these amazing goal scorers. Um, 
their their what is the phrase goals per game so for most of them it was uh between um between two and three games for a lot of them for all of them actually i don't think there was anybody i think van nistelroy from all the strikers who we've discussed um i didn't check it for van percy but van nistelroy was the only one for all the strikers we've discussed who averaged a uh, goal per game that was better than two games so less than two games so he'd score every one point something games the rest were all over two including Rooney, Saha, Berbatov and Tevez. Um, Van Nistelrooy would be behind Saha for me, so he'd be my number two. But we only won one Premiership with, uh, with Van Nistelrooy as well. And I'm definitely taking the championships into account. So Saha's my other guy uh, with Rooney. What years was Saha with us? Uh, he came all three or four. And stayed till? Uh, he left after we won the Champions League. Yeah, that was a very successful team. Um, but Ruud van Nistelrooy would be your two. I yeah. think your third position. Who would you have fourth? Tevez or Van Persie? Oh. Um... Lad, I think third, and I actually, I think I'd put Berbatov three. Ahead of Rude? No, sorry, ahead of um, Tevez and Van Persie. Okay. All right, that's fair. Okay, we'll flip for this now. So do you want heads again? You can side. We'll stick for heads for you. I'll take tails. So heads is for Luis Saha and tails is for Van Persie. Okay. Heads again. Luis Saha. And uh, I want to dedicate this with a little anecdote. Luis Saha said he cried when Ferguson left him out of the, the Champions League final squad. Ferguson called him into the office, he gave him the news, and he started crying. So we couldn't leave him out of the squad. Jesus, that is an interesting team. I think him and Rooney up front to be class, actually. Uh, On the still the gaping hole in Luis Saha's heart. I hope so. Luis Saha, man. All right. Um, seven. I have to fill out dress this number two team. Off screen. <laughs> Um, summarize that team so William from from goalkeeper up to striker uh, lad defensively amazingly solid that could possibly be the strength of our team that back four and the keeper just absolutely amazingly solid that's the Champions League winning season back four 21 goals left in in the league I am just extremely confident in that back four it's amazingly solid uh that midfield uh look it all comes down to Giggsy, what Giggsy we're getting can he actually be the man out there on the left um ronaldo is the best player in the world uh skulls is amazing keen's going to be the general uh protecting that back four and playing amazing forward passes and up front your guaranteed goals we're assuming Luis Saha has fit, Luis Saha has fit uh, but your absolute guaranteed goals with Rooney, Saha and Ronaldo. I think left midfield is the only question mark. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that team overall. I agree with defence. Midfield, I agree with as well. I'm very happy Keane's in there. Um, up front, I think Saha's getting in on I love Saha, but I think there's probably two strikers I'd have in ahead of him, uh, just playing ability-wise on their fitness levels. But I actually think that him and Rooney would be a very good partnership, so I'm happy with that. Um, I, I agree. I think that team is unbelievable. Uh, and from my time, yeah, I think that team 
that team sweeps. You can drop Rooney into the hole as well if you want to play a bit more defensive. Uh, you could actually as well really easily switch to a 4-3-3, play gigs in the middle, and then Saha had pace. You could, those three as well, Ronaldo, Rooney, and Saha up front, you could interchange them. So it's a fluid formation as well. I think that's an outstanding team. Um, I'm going to see now if I can get a split screen going with stop screen. Is that two of us? Yeah, it is. If I can share my screen, share screen. Your entire screen, share. Let me know if this works now because you'll be seeing it. Um, yeah, we can see your screen if that's what you want. So what's on the screen now when you're looking at it? Can you see the two teams up against each other? Yeah. Okay, sweet. So these are the two teams. Why is that a bit bigger? That's annoying. Oh, because it's zoomed in. It's a 90. Up to the top. Up to the top. Still not the same size. Anyway, regardless. Um, these are the two teams. The A's going up against the B's. Van der Sar up against the A. I think that's a very even matchup. Um, to be fair, then I think the back line does separate itself. So I went on the B's, I went Sylvester left back, Blanc and Smalling in the middle, and then Raphael at the right back position. Um, I think the only question mark there is Smalling. Does he definitely get in as the other centre back? Oh, I think the question mark is Blanc over fairness. Over who? Over fairness. I don't over... know. Should he be allowed in it? Okay. So you definitely have Smalling in? I definitely have Smalling in, and then I guess it's either Jones or O'Shea. Or else Heinz gets in. So you're either putting him centre back or putting Sylvester in centre back. Um Yeah, I all the oh yeah, you're right, because I only remember Blanc for one year. Um I just wanted to put him in more so because he I remember him as one as a proper centre back for one year. I don't want to put Jones in just because the hysteria around it. Um Maguire? Just not long enough yet? Not long enough, and he wasn't great in the first half of the season at all, I thought. Mm, yeah, you're probably right there, too. Um, Blanc Smalling. I'm going to put in... Leave that a second. Maybe O'Shea in for Blanc. Uh, I think O'Shea in. in for Blanc. Left midfield, Nani. Oh, I right think Fletcher gets in ahead of Anderson, lad. Valencia. Fletcher, fuck. Unless you want to put Hargreaves in there. Lad, how did I not mention Fletcher? I love Fletcher. Great show. Another player that had a great time with us. Actually, is G Sung Park. He should have got a mention. Um, at some stage during the midfield. Um, Do you know what, actually? If we switch to a 4-3-3 on the A's, I'd have Park in the team. In midfield? Yeah. I nearly let Park. I don't think of anyone put in the midfield with. I just don't think a midfield with Keane and Carrick makes sense. So it just and I forgot about Park, but that solves my puzzle. I'd have Scholes, Keane, and Park Jisong. You'd have Scholes, Keane, and Park Jisong, and switch to a four-three-three. Not if we did switch to a four-three-three. Oh yeah, okay. Um, Anderson, I agree with you putting in Fletcher instead of Anderson. Fletcher, uh, Valencia right midfield. Jason Park, so annoyed I didn't mention him during the A's. Fuck. Uh, and I put Van Nistelrooy and Van Persie up front, which is just a goal getting striking partnership. Uh, two players missing out in the striker positions are Berbatov and Tevez, um, which just goes so we had some great strikers. To be honest, what's interesting is I actually, I wouldn't have had Saha on the Bs either. Um, but lad, they're two good teams. I don't think Van Persie and Van Nistelrooy could play together. That's a fair point as well. I thought that putting them in. Um, I think put Tevez in for one of them. Put Tevez in. Van Persie got in because it was on the coin flip. So it would have to be for Van Nistelrooy. And I really wanted to put Van Nistelrooy in. Um, we can leave Rudin if you want. 
and Nick to Leroy Van Persie. I don't think they'd play together, but it's a sexy sounding partnership. Change that to some of these though. I'm going to leave it as that for now. Uh, fans can like, comment, and subscribe on the teams who they think would win. I definitely think the A's would win, actually. You know, looking back on it, it wouldn't be that close with the defense, especially. Um, but, geez, I actually didn't realize how many good strikers yet until you start naming them out. Larry, I'm very happy with that. that. That would be a. Are we putting Osho in? Osho in? Um, yeah, we should. I don't remember enough for Blanc. Oshé. Dumbass. Oshé. Smalling Raphael. Yeah, what were you going to say? Oh, I think it'll be a close game. I think them going up head to head, lad, I think that. I no, think... lad, no, that swings it for me, comfortably swings it. It's actually just Cristiano Ronaldo's name. I agree. I think he's going to have his way going in between Sylvester and O'Shea. Um, we saw what he did. You know what he did when he did, had a friendly against O'Shea, Sporting Lisbon, when he was second 16 years old. So I think Prime Ronaldo is going to destroy that partnership. Um, I don't think he'd destroy them. I, I personally think he would. I'd be very confident in it. In a big game, if this was hyped up as a big game, I don't think he destroyed him. I look left to agree to disagree. Um, Carrick and Fletcher as well. I suppose if you put Fletcher fucking dogging in on scores, not letting him do his thing. Then you've Carrick sitting back and Keane. I think the I think scores and Keane would overwhelm the two of them in midfield as well, just because of the quality they had in their primes. And I think. What will be interesting is Nani. Nani will be attacking on the wing that Ronaldo's attacking, so that'll be uh, where Brown will have to deal with a prime Nani, which that would be one area where you could see them getting at them. Um, but we'll back Wes Brown's defensive ability. And then Valencia going up against Evra. I think Valencia would nearly be doing more defending against that. Giggs knocking off balls and stuff. Uh, I think we'd manhandle Man midfield, midfield as well actually you think the b's or the a's would manhandle the a's would manhandle that midfield uh, uh and i think Vidic and ferdinand will deal with van Persie and Va actually lad, i don't know that that's a good striking partnership but they just won't get the service from the midfield and i don't think they could play together yeah that's a good point too um mm, yeah I'm always of the opinion that if two players are good enough, they should be able to play together. But like style-wise, you are right. They are kind of both goal getters. The Rooney and Saha one, they mesh together better in your head, definitely. Um, it'd be fascinating to see that. Can you yeah. do like that on Football Manager and no? all? Like create a simulated game with players, no? I saw actually that Sky had a thing up before where they did a team of Carragher's versus a team of Neville. So you definitely can. I'll look into that. That'll be interesting. Uh, we can we can watch it online. Watch it live with a couple of beers and comment on it. Um, I'll just stop sharing my screen. Boom. I think that wraps it up. Uh, looking forward to the feedback now on that. I'm sure we could have forgotten the players if we forgot. Jason Park and Darren Fletcher till the end. Uh, any closing comments on it, Will? Uh, on that exercise... Yeah, look, I'm sure the masses are gonna, you know, get in their head about it, like those little, like fucking woodpeckers. But that's what we've opened ourselves up to. Um, lad, question for you, uh, unrelated to this. Can I ask a question unrelated, or do you have more? Yeah, yeah. On it? yeah. No, it's like fucking alien hands, but it's like Sylvester's fucking hands. Um, the Glazers own Manchester United, Jack. Who is the greatest sportsman under the Glazer umbrella now that Tom Brady has joined the Buccaneers? Uh, you have to enlighten me on what other franchises they're a part of. It's just Tampa Bay and Manchester United.
is Sir Alex under the umbrella as an ambassador? Uh, we can add him after because okay, a okay, player, without, okay, with athlete who is oh, athlete, just player like oh player. Sorry, sorry, I thought you were talking about managers as well. A uh, player, greatest player, greatest player right now, as in our greatest. If only one of the players that's been under their umbrella, so it it has to be oh. the under the okay, umbrella. Okay, I get you. Only one player can write an autobiography. Who are you letting write? Who are you letting have an autobiography? Okay, on greatness, not on interest, as not as like a crazy life or anything for the autobiography's sake. Uh, answer both because that's an interesting. Okay, point. so that's really good on the spot. Answer the crazy one first because it's not the important one. Okay, the crazy one. Uh, that's been under the umbrella. Do, do, do. Well, Roy Keane's already wrote them. Um, I can't be honest. What you say? Yeah, no, nothing. Go on. Um, Fuck me up. Probably... I'll probably say right. Forget about Keane's books, like yeah. So no one's wrote okay, Keane. 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 So Keane. Yeah. Okay. For interest's sake, and then greatest. Ooh, probably, and I haven't been a fan most of his career, but uh, achievement wise, oh, Giggs is tight. Giggs is close. Giggs is there, and yeah, Scholes. Scholes is there as well. Okay, Scholes is there as well. Scholes, Giggs, and Brady are my contenders. And Rooney, then, oh, fucking hell. Rooney will be probably next tier down for me. Uh, I think Scholes and Geek have a lot more on the front side of their career. Ronaldo then, oh, didn't have Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Oh, he wasn't there. He doesn't come. Oh, wait, was he there? He was, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I'm quite sure. Um. So I think Giggs gets knocked off for me because of the off-field issue. And then you get left with Scholes and Brady. And Jesus I'll... Christ, your brother now would be quick to bring up uh, Brady's off-the-field issues now. I can I actually be... hear in my head. I'm the one who told him about those issues. So yeah, I see that issue as well. And I actually forgot about it just as I was about to make this. And I'm a man who values being a good man. So I'm going to go Paul Scholes, which actually makes me really happy to say. Uh, but I think just before you said that, I was going to say he's Brady. Not on to scores his Instagram, and you'll change your answer quickly. Off it, so. I was going to say Brady because when you weigh when you weigh up just the name Brady versus scores, like Brady had, Brady's name is it would be Brady probably. Um, Brady is the answer. Yeah, greatest sportsman in the history of the Glazers sporting umbrella. You are saying Brady. Uh, greatest sportsman, sportsman, yes, like Brady. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, I actually came when I asked the question, I thought it could only be Brady, but gigs, scolds, and Waza. I know what you're saying Waza is a tear down, but he's also the highest ever score in Manchester United player. Yeah, true. Um, uh, but I think Brady is the uh i think brady is the answer i think brady is the one and only answer who's who do your answer be for crazy ah uh, lad i have to think about that now so just give me uh give me a moment uh, also crazy. if ferguson as you're thinking about that if ferguson comes in under the umbrella it's hands down ferguson for me it's not hands down boy uh for me it is just but i'm oh, biased brady yeah, but i'm biased if you probably weighed everything up and it's objective it's not hands down you're probably right but it is ferguson for me um, lad, have we had have we had any sick fuckers that played for us? Oh wait, the the craziest will definitely go to some yank that played for the Buccaneers. Probably yeah, but I couldn't think of any. In Dominican Sue, he played. On oh, him. he's actually a really nice guy. I knew you were going to say him because whatever. But he's actually he's. I don't he's know him personally. You don't want to throw in Owen Hargreaves to the bit, no? For craziest, no. Maybe for greatest sportsman. Uh, look, craziest lad. I actually, I don't know. I'd have to answer that on next week's podcast. So, but Tom Brady, basically. Uh, look, we'll just 
take a moment out of our times now to use our platform, Jack, that we've created to, I suppose, wish Tom best luck in his uh his new chapter for all sports fans. So, Tom, if you're watching, and Giselle, Tom, and Jizzy, uh, Jizzy. best to look down there in, uh, in Tampa Bay. Uh, I'm rooting for them, Jack. I don't know about you. I guess you are too, yeah? Folks, any later on this? Final word to you on if Ferguson is involved, Ferguson or Brady? Uh, Jesus Christ, that, that's, a, that's a nutcracker of a question. So I'm denying, just to be clear, lads, what we're doing here is we're denying either Sir Alex Ferguson or Tom Brady an autobiography, I know, and we're assuming they haven't wrote any. Um, lad, I'm, I am going to, I'm going to deny Sir Alex an autobiography. That's fair. That's all right. Uh, we'll agree to disagree again. All right. Um, it was memorable. William, till next week. Louis, uh, this episode was for you, boy. God bless. And you won Hargreaves. Good luck, guys. And Louis, uh, and Hargreaves. And Saha. And Saha. And Hargreaves.